Woo, Easter, it's over. And we had a great morning. We did this massive scrim drop to open up both of our services. I wanna take you behind the scenes. Here is how it turned out this morning. Watch this. And now we stand together, never alone, singing praise to our God forever and ever. With one voice, to one name, the name above every name, Jesus Christ, the risen King. And that was an awesome moment that I don't think I'll ever forget. A great way to kick off our Easter services. But it was not without its hiccups and trials as we tried to get this thing to work in our space. So I wanna to talk to you about that process that we had of just trying to get this to work and then walk you through kind of our behind the scenes setup with ProPresenter and Jans Vista, MIDI, those kinds of things. And then just kind of share some uh, tips and tricks if you might wanna try this in your space down the road. But before all that, let's talk about the why. Why would you do this? Just to do it? No. Well, in 2014, I was at a conference called Seeds at Church on the Move, and they did an epic opener with the scrim drop. And ever since then, I've kind of in the back of my mind thought, how could I ever do that? And then about five years ago, I thought, what if we incorporated this into our Easter moment and really tied it in thematically? And so that's what we did this year with centering all around the veil being torn and our, our sermon, everything that we did was all around that idea. So that way it's not just some gimmick, it actually helped tell the story of the gospel. So that was the why that we started with, and then we worked backwards from there. So I reached out to my favorite local lighting production house, Integrity Lighting here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and asked them, do you have any of these Kabuki units? That's just what they're named. I guess that was maybe a brand of them uh, that can do these drops. And lo and behold, they actually did. And they had multiple different options for, for sheeting and stuff like that. So spec wise, what we have is, I think we were gonna use maybe 10 Kabuki units. We opted maybe for eight instead. This is a 40 foot by 20 foot scrim. And then we are using to project onto it an Epson 15K laser projector, front projected. And then we have 40 foot of 12 inch box truss on motors. Uh, that is gonna be very important that I'll talk about a little bit later. And Integrity helped us out with some DMX power tricks to kind of make this all work together right at the right moment. But Tuesday morning, the guys showed up to help us with this and we quickly realized this was not going to be as easy as we thought. You see, to hang what we have here, this 40 foot of truss, it needed to come straight from our steel beams, not the purlins in between, which is what I thought we were gonna be hanging from, but the actual steel. Now, you can see we have drop ceiling. Our steel beams are at least, in some places, another eight to 10 feet above that, that ceiling, and other places up to 15 feet for whatever reason. So getting to those beams was going to be problematic. We don't have a catwalk, we don't have any way to do that. So we literally had to put a lift all the way up to the ceiling and then just get as close as we could to those beams. And so luckily the guys were able to find pick points on those steel beams to come down and just catch it on the end of the truss line, it just barely inside our speaker arrays. We weren't able to go up as high as maybe we wanted because of our three speaker arrays. But lo and behold, we got the pick points. We were able to get the motors in place and hook up the truss. Next thing you know, we were rolling, getting that scrim on there and getting things set up and ready to go. So after day one, I was really glad that I hired some professionals to help me out with this. Our building is not set up to do any of this kind of rigging after the fact. You know, they built this and they thought they'll never want to change anything. And so uh, it was great to have some guys that knew what they were doing that we could do this safely. Now the actual Kabuki units are really simple. They're just a couple of pins on actuators, I guess that whenever a certain circuit is fired, uh, given power, then those pop back that pin and then the scrim just releases. It's just on little grommets that are hooked in uh, around those pins. It's very rudimentary, but it works. And I guess it's probably a good thing to keep it simple for something like this. Uh, there is no fail safe though. If one of them messes up, it's gonna be hanging up there. But luckily we didn't have those kinds of issues. <laughs> Now, my original plan involved hiring a local rapper to actually create an original piece around the veil. 
uh, and to tie that in thematically with our opener, but we just we just didn't have time or the funds to be able to do that. So uh, I just went scouring around trying to find the best thing I could, and we loved this Oh Praise the Name uh, arrangement that is from Brentwood Benson, which I you know they closed, so I had to find some other people who had it, but I think it's going to come back out there with some other publishing company. But it just it had that epic moment that we needed to really tie this and hit home the big hit of you know what that's all about. And so once we had all that together, it's like, well, how are you going to display content in different places? We went with ProPresenter 7. Luckily, we have the Mac Studio. So what we did was we just added another display out of the USB-C ports, and it was just for the back projector. And then we used audience looks to only have it on the, the scrim projector when we wanted it. And then when it dropped, that audience look sent it automatically to our main projector over there. And that worked perfectly every time. So uh, shout out to ProPresenter for that, that working. Uh, we did have issues sometimes with it. When the Mac went to sleep, it would forget the screens or something because um, we are using a Decklink Duo for a lot of other screens as well. So I think we had seven screens going out of ProPresenter this Easter Sunday uh, between all the different things. And you know what? It worked perfectly. Now. Timing is another thing that is super important. We wanted to figure that out and nail it with this. So what we ended up doing was utilizing the ProPresenter timeline MIDI functions. It's really annoying the way you have to put them in one at a time. You can't copy and paste cues around. But uh, we did that, and those were actually sending our play commands to Jans Vista. And so Brett, my tech director, he took the vision, uh, the inspiration from Church on the Move, and created some great dynamic lighting looks to kind of help tell the story along with the visuals that are coming on the projection. And the great thing that you can do to tie this all together is by using backlighting, you can create silhouettes of the band, different kind of moods and, and energy there with your backlighting. That's really important to kind of help tell the story and to keep the energy going as you build to that moment. So we did a great job. It was all just preset over MIDI and preset in Jans Vista. And luckily it worked perfectly. We had just had a quick fire command for the power that is going into a just on off dimmer pack that hit these actuators at the right time and bam the curtain dropped every single time so let's talk about the cost to actually do this rental for easter for a week-long rental including all of the moving parts uh installation and takedown trucking we were right at around four thousand dollars now, it may not cost you that much money. For us, though, we didn't have a lot of the things we needed to be able to do this. Like, for instance, the Kabukis were only like $450 for the week to rent. Um, the projector was like $1,700 for the week to rent. So if you have a big projector, maybe you could get away without renting that. Uh, the truss, the rigging, and all those things was $600, but the installation of this for just this event and takedown was another $1,500 just for manpower and expertise there to come help us do that. So if you've already got rigging in the right places with you know motors and things like that, then that would save you a lot of money and you could actually accomplish this for not too much money. But I'm so glad that we actually just finally pulled the trigger and did this. It made a huge impact. We had old ladies gasping at that moment and going, oh my goodness. You know, and just people being in awe and, and that impact that we're trying to make by using the arts and using technology to help tell the story. I feel like this was just like a home run for that kind of idea. The things we're trying to do as a creative arts ministry, you know, to help tell the oldest story, the greatest story ever told in maybe a, a little new and fresh way. And you know what, some of you you may think like I do, like, oh, it's been done before, you know, people have probably seen this, but honestly, I don't think many people in my church here in, you know, green country, Oklahoma, have really ever witnessed something like this in person. So don't get caught in that trap of thinking like, well, you know, it wouldn't be as good as that other church. I mean, if you have a vision for something and you really feel like it can help tell the story, man, just go for it. Well, I hope that you found this video inspirational or informational. Uh, if you have any questions for me or my team about how we accomplished something that I didn't mention, drop that in the comments. And if you liked this video, why not just take a second and actually hit that like button? Uh, I really appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed and you made it this far in the video, come on, man, hit that subscribe button. We're, we, 
I am always trying to post videos that I think might be helpful as I just document the journey of being the worship and media arts pastor here at Central. It was 13 years this, this last week was my anniversary. It's crazy to think uh, what all I've been able to be a part of here and the great things that God is up to here. And I can't wait to share more of that with you. So remember guys, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory. See ya. Darkness. The sky didn't make a sound. No breeze to soothe a weary soul. No tears of heaven to wash away the bloody timbers of the cross. We held our breath in disbelief. The guards watched in confusion. Jesus, the King of the Jews, is dead. How could this happen? We believed him. Is this the great deception of heaven that we would be mocked and misled by God? The prophets promised one that would save us, one who would bring freedom and healing. We thought it was this Jesus. We were sure it was him. But he is a man just like the rest of us. And now we are left alone. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all. Darkness had won, heaven silent as a tomb. But then, out of the shadows, something happened.